We'll get right into that because the Albanese government's only got itself to blame for the ongoing mess of the 141 plus foreign criminals now released into the Australian community. Yes, it is further amending the legislation. It tried to rush through the parliament early this week and it's blustering about keeping the parliament sitting till Christmas to pass the bills as if the Liberal Party seriously is going to block any bill to keep these criminals locked up. But all the manoeuvrings have now gone on for weeks and weeks are only needed because Labor has got this issue wrong at every step. And the more that comes out, the worse the government looks, with the Home Affairs Minister seeming both inept and deceitful, and the Prime Minister floundering, given his long history on the left, as a man soft on borders, thereby lacking the spine to take charge of an issue that goes to the core competency of his government. The issue of turnbacks. Uh, for me, uh, that was something that I couldn't support. Uh, but in the context of the policy, I said uh, earlier on in the week that you didn't have to be, you could be tough on people smugglers uh, without being weak on humanity. Strong on people smugglers without being weak on humanity. And we should be not doing anything in this parliament uh, for the sake of being prepared to cause pain to them, simply for the sake, simply for the sake of a perceived political advantage, and that's what this legislation is about. And uh, what we've seen, of course, is that people have uh, remained on Manus and Nauru for far too long. Uh, what is essential is that the status quo at the moment, whereby you have ministers who are saying, uh, that people will be transferred en masse, i.e. because there are medical issues, surely that's an acknowledged by the, uh, acknowledgement by the government that the current situation is simply untenable. I support the Liberal Party's uh, board position, but I don't like this and I don't like that and I don't like that either. Leopards don't change their spots. And the Labor left that controls this government has always been opposed to border protection and immigration detention, regardless of what the PM might have told Australians at the last election to buy their vote. And now it seems obvious, having read yesterday's full High Court decision, that this government torpedoed its own case by conceding to the court that there was no possibility of the applicant, the child rapist we know as NZYQ, from ever being removed from Australia, even though the government subsequently made a whole lot of frantic efforts to have him removed, as those secret emails from Andrew Clennell have revealed. But despite trying desperately to circumvent an adverse ruling by getting this child rapist out of the country, the government then never had a plan B. Never had a plan B. It didn't have an option if the case failed, which it did, and so it lost the case. My question is to the Minister for Home Affairs. The Minister failed to prepare for an expected High Court loss and then falsely claimed she was advised she would win. She claimed urgent laws weren't necessary until we wrote them for her. She claimed the Coalition's preventative detention proposal was utterly impossible, but now says Parliament won't rise without legislating it. She can't explain how one of the criminals she released has disappeared. Minister, why is your job safe when the Australian public is not? We have seen three weeks of the most shameless politics I have virtually ever seen played in this parliament. Al Jazeera has reported that Cyril Azar Umar, who was sentenced in Malaysia for the murder of a pregnant woman that involved shooting her and then blowing up her body with explosives, was released from immigration detention into the Australian community, not wearing a tracking device or subject to a curfew. Can the Minister confirm whether this is true? Wow. I will say that if I am unaware of those media reports, um, I'll obviously look into them. And after a whole day in the Parliament asking questions like those, here's the question the government still can't answer today. Now, why have the High Court only ruled that NZYQ must be released from detention? Why did it let all the others out as well? The murderers, the other rapists, the pedophiles. Because nowhere in the High Court's actual judgment, and the full decisions, of course, were released yesterday, was that required. So what's this say to me? It says that deep down, this soft on borders government, and it's 
always lefty prime minister, didn't really mind having the High Court to make a decision for it, to release long-term detainees into the community, despite all their serious crimes, because that solved internal issues for Labor with members and MPs who want no detention and open borders. That's what this is all about. Hiding behind the High Court, saying that the High Court maybe do it, hoping no one would notice, not the opposition, least of all the Australian public. Only that's not what the High Court said. The boy <laughs> and the Australian people, boy, they have worked this out. They've worked out what it means for their safety and that of their families. Now, aside from losing the voice referendum and the energy policy train wreck, this is the Albanese government's worst failure so far. And there's absolutely no one else to blame. Is it any wonder the polls have turned? Is it any wonder? And is it any wonder this is starting to look like a one-term government?